What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today, tonight, wherever you're watching from, we have another build coming at you. Um, as you can tell in the description of the video, we are going to be doing a DIY subwoofer box um, for the truck. It's a 2013 F-150 crew cab. So the, uh, the idea is to try and cram as much box volume into a limited amount of real estate underneath the, uh, the back seat there. So the, uh, the goal is gonna be two tens, down firing um, and yeah we're gonna get to doing this uh, box we're going to uh, be using half inch MDF um, some of you might say it's too thin or too small um, in this application I think it'll be just fine um, using thicker wood I don't want to kind of jeopardize the amount of limited volume that we can make inside that box so we're gonna go with the thinner stuff just make sure we uh, do proper bracing um, this is the first box that I've ever built so uh, you know Bear with me, but uh, I did a little bit of research. I think we're onto something good. Um, I did have this uh, plywood here. I think it's like three quarter inch of real wood, but it's actually just not long enough. Um, it's only 48 inches wide, so the box is gonna be about 52. So unfortunately, we can't use that. Um, so anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go to Home Depot and pick up some wood. Alright guys, so uh, obviously we just got back from Home Depot, picked up the uh, the MDF, and uh, I was going to show you here on this paper kind of the plans I threw up. So this is my uh, kind of rendering of, uh, I guess, you know, what, what the uh, 3D, you know, model may look like. Um, this is obviously from the top looking down, I threw the little dashed lines in there to kind of show, you know, that's, that's obviously the speakers from the bottom. And on the left here, that's actually from the bottom looking up. So you see I kind of want about a two inch uh, lip all the way around the three sides here so you know kind of give the air a little spot to kind of you know release or escape from um again half inch mdf uh go feel free to pause this these are kind of my rough dimensions that i got with obviously a tape measure and just you know measuring underneath the bottom of the seat um the both sides the rear the front and then top and bottom and this is kind of the rough uh parts list that i threw together obviously we got the sheet of mdf so we're good there i'm going to use some wood glue um just some brad nails to you know hold it together while the glue uh, while the glue dries and then I was thinking about going originally I was wanting to go with the kicker um, RT tens um, and then the Rockville five channel amp I'm definitely going with a five channel amp uh, but then I've ixnayed both of these so I'm not going with these anymore that was the original plan I'm still going with two tens and I'm still going with a five channel however um, we'll uh, we'll get there when we get there I actually picked them up today I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, but they do start with a P, and they're uh, very near to me. <laughs> so anyways, let's get to building. About to go down. Welcome to Florida. It's the middle of November. Flip-flops and freaking shorts, man. It's hot. It's like 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyways guys, so uh, I got some table saws and all that good stuff, but I'm gonna do this. Um, it's just always easier to use a circular saw. So uh, you can use pretty generic tools to like even do this. You don't have to have uh, the top of the line stuff. Um, so all I'm gonna do is, uh, well, just watch.
so we got the long ones done. Now it's time for the, uh, the sides of the box. Um, they're gonna be, if you refer to that paper that I did earlier, um, these are about a little over 13 and a quarter, I think it's about 13 and a half wide left here. 13 and a half wide, so I'm at the end, the longest of the sides will be 13 and a quarter, so I'm gonna use this kind of strip that's left over. I still have a good amount, almost half the, uh, the four by eight, so you'll have left over if you use just a sheet and build something comparable to this. So uh, I retired the massive oversized plant and big ass uh, wood thing. Retired them for something smaller and something more manageable. So uh, we know it's gonna be 13 and a quarter this way and seven and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure back five and three quarters, which is there and there. So five and three quarters, that'll give me, boom. Once I mount this here to the clamp, a little trick I was telling you about earlier, a little inside on these ones. And uh, yeah, get to cutting. So we have got the top, the bottom, the rear, and the front of the box. One, two, three. All of these are cut down to their final dimensions. We are good to go on them. Anyways, it's kind of hard to see. Sorry, I'm cutting at night. Um, so now we're done. We're down to the uh, doing the sides. Now, as I said earlier, we've got a little bit of surplus. Um, as you can see there, so uh, you can do this with the uh, with the miter saw or hand, whatever the hell that thing is we just used. You can do it with this. I'm just gonna kind of try and get it a little bit, a little bit more accurate with this uh, with this here table saw. So uh, right now we're gonna kind of cut this down, make it exactly th 13 and a quarter inches, and then uh, bring down the sides and uh, get the, this puppy all lined up and uh, continue. Let's go. So we got them to that length now. Now we're gonna bring uh, this one we already have at the uh, desired height of seven and a quarter inches. Now I'm gonna measure up five inches here. I'm gonna go up seven and a quarter, which is this length here. Come up five, which should probably be about there. Make a uh, mark here, draw that line, get it here, take that off, and uh, the sides will be done. Bazinga. Bazinga. All right. Let's 
get the assembly. All right, here's a quick update. Uh, obviously, we got everything cut and uh, did some dry fitting. So let's check this out right here. Put the boxes together, um, or the box. So I got the top. Nothing's nailed or glued. Um, just a dry fit. So you got the top of it. It's going to be sitting over here. And uh, the bottom, everything's just kind of standing on its own. You can see the angle. Obviously, the top of the seat will be sitting there. Um, these two pieces, like I showed you earlier, they do have a bit of a bevel or an angle on them. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, how it's turned out so far. Uh, one thing I'll add is here is the center brace I'm going to put in. There are the measurements for it. Um, obviously the five and an eighth on the right side is uh, accounting for that bit of a pitch on there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get this center, center brace uh, cut out and ready to go. All right, guys, it is the next day. Um, still in the garage. I got a little late last night. So uh, uh, we're back. Um, going to start assembly today uh, first, but we're going to cut the, uh, the holes out for the subwoofers. So uh, we're in the garage with the doors closed. It is daylight. Um, the neighbors across the street are getting a roof put on, so it's rather noisy and obnoxious. But uh, anyways, here we go. So uh, what I picked up is uh, this here straight router bit set. Um, it obviously just does, uh, you can kind of zoom in. It'll just do straight down cuts. Um, zoop, see if it'll focus. So I'm using the uh, just the quarter inch one. So. Uh, um, but yeah, that's kind of what the, uh, there, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, you can do this with a jigsaw, cutting these holes out. You could do it, uh, you know, with a router or there's probably other ways. But, uh, I just had this uh, little trim router here. So I've kind of got it set up. Um, I didn't even know it came with this, but this router came with this little L bracket. So, um, I'm sure it's, and we're not focused. There we go. Uh, so it came with this little L bracket. I just put that on there. Um, and what I plan to do is just run a screw kind of in the center of the hole where I want to go. Um, and then have this thing just basically pivot on that center point. Uh, obviously to find the center point, I measured the center of the board. Um, this is where the, uh, the brace will go for the box. So you got this little brace here. Um, it's going to go there. And then from the edge of that brace to here, I found the center point this way, center point this way. I have, uh, you know, where the, where the screw is going to go to pivot from. So uh, let's get going. So I've never done this before. So, you know, it'll be a learning experience for all of us, I guess. So. Okay, so this is kind of the setup I have. Um, again, this is a DIY video. I don't know if I've told you guys this before. So this ain't perfect. Um, there's, there's, like I said, there's many ways to do it. Um, I measured from the edge of the bit and to just uh, proud of that screw is, and that's gonna give me just over four and a half inches. The uh, diameter for the uh, this subwoofer is nine and an eighth is the size of the hole. So obviously you cut that in half to get the uh, half the diameter. And uh, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna get this puppy plugged in. Let's see if we can make some magic happen. Okay, as you can see, I just kind of plunged it in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take a double, triple, quadruple measurement to make sure we're uh, there. So you can see this hole's gonna end up being, what do we got right at four and a half inches from the center. 
Now that's also measuring off the left side of that screw head, so it's probably going to be just over nine inches, which is exactly what we want. So always double, triple, quadruple check. So let's keep going. Okay, first pass. I don't know about you guys, but I am very happy with that. Let's keep going and keep dropping that bit down further and further until we're through. Um, time out. I'm gonna cut this on something other than my four-wheeler. There you have it folks, that is a very, very nice circle. I'm very happy with that. So, that uh, definitely worked out better than I thought it would. Uh, it took a few more passes than I thought, I didn't realize how many times I'd have to drop that, uh, that blade down, but uh, anyways, let's keep going, do the other one, knock it out. All right, and there's the final product. <clears throat> I like it. They are centered, centered. Good to go. All right, let's keep moving. Alright guys, so uh, we're going to keep on moving. I just got back actually from the store. It's been probably about uh, two hours. Let this glue tack up, dry up. Um, I'm going to start hitting it with the uh, the black silicone to do all the edges. Uh, we'll jump into that. I actually ran into the store to get um, a terminal to wire it in. So these are going to be, uh, they are Pioneer if you haven't guessed already. Um, they're 4 ohm subs and uh, we're going to be wiring them in parallel. Um, so obviously the hookup will be two ohm. So uh, they will be parallel in the box. So I'll have to drill a hole down through here through the brace to connect them together. And then there'll only be one terminal out the side. Um, so if I can find the terminal soon, I'm gonna put it in the box. If not, I'm just gonna run the wire straight through and then uh, I'll install a terminal a little bit later. But uh, let's keep going on siliconing. There we go. So we got it all nice and uh, caulked in. I'm gonna run my finger, get a wet paper towel, 
and uh, do little joints, but uh, looks good. Obviously, you want to caulk it to keep the air out. I'm using the uh, the Dynaflex Ultra from DAP. Um, it's the only black one that the uh, Home Depot sold, so the choice was easy. Call me crazy, I think I'm gonna put a bead of silicone right at the edge all the way around before I glue the top on. You may or may not want to do this, but the caulk gun I'm using, the caulk gun I'm using is not going to fit easily in this 10 inch hole. I'm trying to get this sucker in there and, and do the caulk work. Um, I do want to caulk everything, so getting this gun up in there is kind of going to be a pain in the butt. So uh, I might get a little crazy and throw a bead prior to setting the top on and gluing it and nailing it. And uh, then all I have to do is hit my hand in there. Sorry. Put my hand in there and smear the uh, the caulk in and call it a day. But uh, anyways, we'll get to going that and uh, let's do it. Oh. I don't know if you guys use a lot of caulk guns, but I found putting a drywall screw. If you don't let your caulk dry out, put a drywall screw right in the uh, the tip of this thing, and it keeps the uh, the caulk from drying out. A little trick I learned back in the day. So, let's do this. All right. This might be a complete waste of time, but I think it might. I think I might be on to something. Now we're gonna hit it with the glue. I don't know about you guys, but I think that was a pretty good idea. Look at that. Now we got a nice bead in there. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this, such as that. It's inside, people, it don't matter. It ain't gotta be clean. We ain't doing baseboards in a house. All right, guys, we've reached the end. This is it. I, uh, I just filmed an entire outro video and the radio is running and I know how YouTube is with copyright so we're doing it again. Anyways, the project is done. It's in its raw form. I'm going to have to sand it, make it pretty, blah, 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 but it came out great. I'm really glad that I did this project. Um, compared to the two to three hundred dollar boxes that you could buy to get this, I mean, it, it's totally worth it. I mean, I, I would do this again. Yes, there's things that change, but uh, honestly, not, not that much. I mean, I really like the design it came out with. Again, you know, you, you know what we did, you know, you know, the thickness of the wood and all that. We got the dual tens. Takeaways. One thing I'll note is be sure you cut this freaking hole the size that you want it. Mine came out a 16th too small. Doesn't sound like much. Oh, you can sand it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to sand it. When I sit the sub down in there, it literally teeters a tiny bit. I mean, I might be able to run the router and kind of bevel the edge and really drop it in there. But then I'm, I might sacrifice air escaping. I don't, I don't know. So I'm gonna sand these out, you know, a lot. And, uh, you know, a 16, not a lot and get those right. But overall, it came out very, very nice. We got the wires run inside. We got the wires running. It's gonna go out to the amp. I will be going and sanding this sucker over. And uh, I did some more research. Might be going Raptor liner, um, the truck liner. Um, or Herky liner. Uh, Herky liner, I can go to the store and buy. Raptor liner, I'm gonna have to go online. Probably gonna go with Herky liner because it's easier. But anyways, uh, this is how it turned out. I'll give you some close-ups here at the end of the vid. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around to the end of this. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and uh, the next vid's gonna be awesome. Everything's gonna get installed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.